Hello and welcome back. So let's continue with our tutorial and look at attributes and styling. So as much as this is nice, we can do better with styling. For example, if I want uh, this image to instead appear somewhere here or maybe make it bigger in terms of the width and the height, then I will need to add some attributes to this. That's more information about a tag or what is known as an element. So these are elements and they are tags at the same time. So uh, this whole thing is an element. The name here is a tag, but this is an element. So just when I'm referring to those things, this is what I mean. This is an element. This is a tag. Okay, so um, we are looking at attributes and styles in here. So an attribute is this part right here. It's more information about a an element. Now you can put as many tags as you want as long as they mean something. Now keep in mind, just like the tag names, you can also add your own attributes. They don't have to be special like these ones. This one has a special meaning. When you put source, it knows the image, the browser knows to get the image from here. Because if I were to do this right here and just name it something else like ABC, uh, the browser will not know to get the image from here and this will disturb things. So if I now refresh like this, it will say, okay, the source is missing and therefore I don't know where to get the image unless you put back source like this. However, I can put ABC and say is equal to and then have some content here. Let's say some text. So this is pretty valid for when we are using uh, another language called JavaScript. We can extract this information for later. But just know that you can make your custom att attributes if you want. But we want to look at those that have special meaning in here so that we can make them useful. For example, this href here, this is a hypertext reference, I guess. That's what it stands for or something. So this is uh, what tells the browser where to go, where to navigate to once somebody clicks on this thing. So these are pre-programmed uh, attributes. Now let's look at some common ones that are used. So the first one is ID. The other one is source, as you have seen. And there's also href. And uh, sometimes there's name. Uh, there's quite a number of these. There's also title, etc., etc. So if you want, you can just Google uh, these things to know all of them that exist. But these are the basic ones. And you're going to see the ones we will use while doing our stuff. Or oh, the other one is style. Very important. Okay, so let's look at what title actually does and ID. So here um, on image, I can add an ID. For example, I say ID is equal to. So the as you can see, the attribute format is the same. You have the attribute name, you have the equal sign, and you have the quotation marks to mark the content of that attribute. So same format here. It's always good to use double quotes because sometimes you can you may want to put something like Mark's name something like this. So this single quote will be well taken care of by the double quotes outside because it's very rare or it's never that you're going to use a double quote in a, in a sentence like this. And if you did, if for example, you had used a single quotes on the outside here, the browser will be confused as to where the actual text ends. It will assume that the ID is just this part right here. Uh, because that's where it starts and ends. And then it's going to wonder where the closing for this one is. So this is why double quotes are better, even though single quotes will also work if the content you've put in here doesn't have another single quote. So just good practice, put double quotes there instead. So an ID can be any text. It can be uh, ID itself. It can even be I think it can be numbers. I'm not really sure. I haven't used numbers ever when making IDs, but yes, numbers do work as well. So that can be an ID there. Oh, there's one more that I forgot here called class, and we're going to see how that works as well. So with adding these attributes like the ID, this is just an identifier 
of this particular element. So you won't see any difference on the actual page itself. Uh, nothing will change because we've just given it an ID. Source is, as you can see, gives us the source of an image. F href gives us the link to go to in an A tag. And then we can also put name. Just like we have ID, we can put name and then um, element underscore name like this. So what's the difference between ID and name? Now, name is used in forms when we are collecting user information, which we're going to cover a bit later. And this is the name of the element when we post that information. ID is for identifying this particular element when we are using JavaScript. If we want to grab this item and, for example, we want to change what the source of the image is in real time, we will need to be able to identify this item for us to be able to change something about it. So we'll use the ID. We can also use a class name, which we'll get to a bit later. So let's look at title as well. So if I use title here, this creates a two tip for users. So I can say something like title and say, uh, this is a burger like that. So title, what that will do when somebody hovers over the element, it's going to create a small two tip, which is like that. This is a burger. So that's the attribute that does that. But then we have this final attribute called style. So we will look at class and uh, even style in greater detail and name a bit later. So let me remove this and that custom one. So if I look at style now, style is very special because style gets to give us um, more options in order to style our tag. Now, before we go even further there, there is also a width and height attribute. So this is an image, so it makes sense to give it a width. We can call it, we can give a width in both pixels, which is PX, or we can use percentage. So let's try 800 pixels. So as you can see here, the width is quite small, but if we refresh now, you see it has grown bigger because of that width attribute. We can also add a height attribute at the same time, but I would usually not add both at the same time because I can add, I can add something like 100 pixels and this will skew the way the image looks. Look at that. So it's limited to 100 and 800 this way. This squishes the image like that. This is why I prefer to just use one of them. If I want to use the height by itself, it will auto resize the width like that. And if I decide to use the width by itself, it will auto resize the height like this. Okay, now all this can be added to the style tag instead. So for example, I can do style like this. Now style is special because it adds more uh, properties and, um, uh, and values inside here. So the way this is an attribute equals and then a uh, a value. We can also have properties in here. For example, the same width we were doing, I can do width and then put a full colon in here because I can't put an equal sign anymore. There's another equal sign on the outside of this. The browser will get confused. So instead, a full colon is used. So I'll say 400 pixels like that. Okay. So refresh and there we see it has reduced to a proper uh, 400 pixels. Now, what would be the point of doing this instead of just writing width is equal to 400 pixels? Well, it's because style can hold more than just one of these. So I can put a semicolon here and put height at the same time, put a full colon again, and then put 100 pixels like that. So inside this one attribute, I have put several properties and their values. So width, 500, 400 pixels, semicolon height. So I can keep adding items here or styling information, as you can see there. So what I want instead is to tell this, um, uh, because an image, let me remove the height. So let me give you a few hints on styling itself. Uh, so 
for example, this image, there's two uh, ways things are displayed here. The first one is block and the second one is inline. Okay, so like you had seen earlier in the tutorial, when I added a div to this header, it went all the way to the end of the page. So it moved because I had just added a div, it went all the way from here to the end. So that's his block display. So what block display does is it moves the content to a new line if there's already content on that line and then it moves all the way, uh, it takes up all the space in that row. So that's block. Now inline is like text where it's in the same line. So like the, the way I would type I and then if I type N, the N won't go to the next line. It will keep in the same line just like this. So this is inline display. Block is where once you add one item, you add the next one, it goes to the next line. So just like this here, even though I don't add a break tag, if I don't add a break tag and just duplicate the image tag. Now in order to duplicate this, you just put your cursor anywhere on the line. Just make sure you haven't selected anything because if you select something and you hold down control or command and then shift D, it will duplicate whatever you've selected. However, if you haven't selected anything, you've just put a cursor there and do this exact same thing, Control Shift D, it will duplicate the line. So this is only for sublime text. Other editors do it differently. So I have two images here of exactly the same image. So let's see what happens. If I refresh, it goes to the next line like this. This is very different from divs themselves. If I were to put a div here, it would go all the way to the end. And then the moment I put another div, it would be on the next line. Now, even if the div is only this wide, if I put a second one, it will go down to the next line and not this way because it's not by default. It doesn't display in line like this one. So images are inline display, which is cool. So the uh, section here. So what I want to do is I want to move this image into the center here. So what I can do uh, in order to move it to the center is to give it a margin. So here it tells you the margin is the area around the item. So I can say something like uh, margin. Um, then 20 pixels just so we can see it so you see it's right at the edge here but if i refresh now it has moved by 20 pixels and it has moved everything around it 20 pixels away so it has a some kind of force field around it that keeps everything away by 20 pixels but i can tell it to use an auto value like this so which means it, it's going to share all the space equally on the left and on the right. And as a result, uh, it's supposed to move to the center. Now, where the problem is, is that the display of this thing is inline. So it doesn't go all the way to the end here. So it's just still going to stick around at this edge, giving space for other items to show up here, just like this. But if we then change with this margin auto, we then change and say, um, display as a block so like i said any element can be changed any properties of any element can be changed to suit your needs so now we are changing it to display block just like if it was a div so when we do that and refresh it moves to the center because now it can leave an automatic number of margin here and another one there without minding if other items are coming this side or that side it knows it leaves alone in this column or in this row. So it's just going to move to the whole center. So the reference has changed. It's for the whole page now, instead of just trying to leave space for other items. So this is a simple way of how we actually style things in here. So you can do quite a bit. You can put, um, let's see here on the text here, uh, like on the block quote, I can move and add a style like this and then just tell it to change the font weight. Um, okay. 
So you can change the font weight to bold like this. So let's check that out. The text here, it becomes bold. You can also change the font size. So semicolon font size, and then let's say 30 pixels like that. So we are overwriting the block quote original settings by doing this. Now you can Google all types of styles that are available for HTML or if you just type A here, it will bring all the suggestions of the possible. As you can see, there's quite an amount of things you can do here. Very, very much. So it goes all the way down there. Anything with A. Let's look at anything with B, anything with C. You see, so there's really so much you can do here. So this is an introduction to styling like this, but we will do a detailed styling video when we introduce ourselves to CSS. So this is all about attributes and styles. I'll see you in the next video where we do some practical work in styling something.